want an affordable and practical compact SUV with decent off-road capability. Is this latest version of the Suzuki Vitara up to the task? Let's find out. The original small SUVs, the Vitara is Suzuki's best-selling model here in the UK and it's remained a popular offering since its launch in 2015. It's been given a number of different updates over the years. In 2019 it had refreshed styling, an updated safety kit and in 2020 the 48 volt mild hybrid system came fitted as standard across the entire range. This review car is the latest full hybrid model which went on sale in the UK in early 2022. So what does it do that's uniquely different from other models in the small SUV segment and how does it differentiate itself from rivals like the Ford Puma, Skoda Kamek, Renault Captur and Nissan Juke just to name a few. We'll find out but before we do head over to the OSV website to browse the latest special offers on the Vitara as well as other Suzuki vehicles and make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with our latest in-depth reviews. The Vitara boasts a bold design making it easy to spot in a crowded car park. I like the prominent creases on the clamshell bonnet and the way they lead your attention to this vertically slatted front grille. And I like the chrome strips they've used for the slats themselves. These merge into the LED headlights that now come as standard. They were added to the range with the 48 volt hybrid model. Below the grille we have a trapezoid design to the bumper that gives the front end here a rather rugged feel and that's encased between front fog lights. Overall I think the front end here has a rather feline appearance but let me know what you make of it in the comments. I like the pronounced lines running along the side profile and the way the roof gradually slopes down and then rather dramatically at the end completely drops for this bulky rear end. I mean it's not the most aerodynamically designed car. You get silver roof rails as standard as well as rear privacy glass and 17 inch alloy wheels and with the top spec SZ5 variant these are in a rather nice polished design. There's 11 different shades to choose from including four metallic options they set you back around £500. Then you have the six dual zone or two tone colour schemes that allows you to have this cosmic black roof and door mirrors with a chosen metallic shade like this bright red. The Vitara comes in at 4175 millimetres in length so it's longer than the Seat Arona but shorter than the Ford Puma and the Skoda Kamek. It's also not as wide as those cars but it is higher and we're going to hop in later on to see what impact that's had on headroom. It's actually very similar in size to the Citroen C3 Aircross. If you want to find out more about that car and what we made of it click the pop-up banner above to check out our in-depth review. I haven't got much to say about the rear end and it's not because it's raining uh, but I like the bulky like clusters and the way they bulge out of the tailgate that's a nice feature. So practicality of course it's a very important thing for a small SUV. So how much stuff can we fit in the back of the Vitara? Let's find out. It's a decent boot capacity for a small SUV but only if you opt for the mild hybrid variant and that gives you 375 litres to play with in total. That's the same size as the Ford Focus then but not as much as one of this car's key rivals, the Nissan Juke. That gives you 422 litres. Click the pop-up banner up there to dive into that boot space. Sadly the boot capacity reduces to 289 litres if you opt for the full hybrid variant as a result of the larger battery that the car has to accommodate but regardless you get a nice and wide boot opening here it's easy to load those awkwardly shaped and sized items into the back in fact it's just enough space for three to four of these small carry-on luggage they slide in pretty easily because the loading lip is nice and low if you want to fit four in there you will have to take this parcel shelf off that's going to translate to one to two larger adult suitcases. There's cubby holes on either side for your golf ball collection plus hooks to strap objects down and there's a decent amount of underfloor storage if we lift up the height adjustable boot floor which by the way sits completely flush with that loading lip. It's mainly reserved by the uh, maintenance tools at the moment but there's some crevices in there where you can stuff objects to keep out the prying eyes of peeping toms. If you need to fit an adult's bike in the back we can fold down the rear bench in a 60-40 arrangement and it's actually pretty easy to 
to do from the back here. Just toggle the levers on either side of the bench and the seats will fly down. You have to give them a bit of welly because they're not spring loaded, but they'll fold down for you. And as you can see, there's no gap created in the floor there. So it's easy to slide long bits of wood and your bike in to the rear cabin space. And I'll just show you that suitcase slides up and down very easily. So yeah, pretty practical. I would have liked to have seen a sliding rear bench option like you get with the Citroen C3 Aircross and the Renault Capture to extend the boot capacity at the expense of rear passenger space. And that would have been especially good for the full hybrid version. I can't help but feel that if you really need to cram this space full of all your luggage, equipment, you know, camping stuff for a family holiday, it's going to be a bit strained and you're going to be all the way up here to that roof lining. But for the weekly grocery shop and taking the dog for a walk, absolutely fine. Okay then guys, if you're interested in getting a Vitara and you need a hand finding the perfect version for you, click the link in the description below to head over to the OSV website and get in touch with one of our vehicle specialists. They'll be happy to advise further, answer any questions and get the ball rolling on securing your ideal specification or if you've got a phone near you you can just call the number down there so that's 01903 538 835 right then let's see how the Vitara drives on UK roads in 2022 let's put it to the test So then guys, to keep the Vitara competitive with rivals, it can be had with either manual transmission or automatic, as well as rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And Suzuki calls this the all grip system and I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. The entry level petrol unit can be configured with the SZT and the SZ5 mild hybrid variants. And this comprises a 1.4 litre petrol unit. Uh, it's the same tech shared with the Suzuki Swift Sport in that you get the booster jet technology that enhances fuel efficiency and performance. With manual transmission and rear wheel drive, this version of the Vitara outputs 129 horsepower and 235 newton meters of torque for a pretty respectable zero to 62 time of 9.5 seconds so that's on par with the majority of vehicles in the small SUV class. Fuel economy is very impressive you can achieve up to 53 mpg on the combined cycle and CO2 emissions are pretty low so around 121 grams per kilometer and that places this Vitara in the 29% benefit in kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023 so it's actually a pretty desirable option for business customers. Also so the Vitara qualifies for a small road tax reduction after the first year due to that mild hybrid system. Right then, if you absolutely have to opt for all wheel drive to get out of those precarious situations, you'll be pleased to know that Vitara offers one of the best variants in its segment. So performance slightly suffers because it is heavier than the rear wheel drive version. So it can do 0 to 62 in 10.2 seconds. Not bad, but not great. MPG slightly reduces to 48 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and CO2 emissions slightly higher at 132 grams per kilometer. If automatic transmission is an absolute must, it is a great option. Miles per gallon, you can achieve up to 50 mpg on the combined cycle and it outputs around 129 grams per kilometer of CO2. So it's still in a pretty reasonable benefit in kind band. The more powerful option is a 1.5 liter petrol unit with full hybrid technology. This comprises a small electric motor and a tiny 0.84 kilowatt hour battery pack that half this energy lost from deceleration and braking back into it to assist with the start stop function and help the vehicle set off from standstill. Auto gear shift is configured as standard with this powertrain and this automatically shifts the manual transmission and the gear ratios to optimize performance and fuel efficiency. Suzuki claims this enables the driver to get the driving experience of a manual with the ease and shifting convenience of an automatic and it's what we have with this model. I've quite enjoyed this transmission it's decently responsive and it keeps jerkiness to a minimum however the car is pretty slow to set off again especially when that start stop system is enabled and it's really slow changing through the gears especially at the lower end often in first and second you're exceeding 3000 rpms and i'm just waiting for the gears to shift and they just don't you can remedy this by enabling the manual mode by flicking the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel but i'd argue why even bother going for automatic if you 
you use that on a regular basis and it just isn't as fun as a regular manual. In two wheel drive form, that's the version we have of our test car. This powertrain achieves 115 horsepower and 139 newton meters of torque for a pretty sluggish zero to 62 time of 12.7 seconds. And it certainly does feel slow, especially as you're building up speed on an A road or dual carriageway. So worth taking into account there. Top speed is around 111 miles per hour for this variant and CO2 emissions and fuel economy figures are identical to the manual transmission variant for the um, entry level petrol option. Indeed, taking a look at my trip computer, it says that my average fuel economy is 46.4 MPG. So that's quite a bit lower than Suzuki's claimed 53 MPG figure. And we are doing a mix of driving on A roads, B roads and country roads. The all grip four wheel drive version with this beefier powertrain achieves a zero to 62 time of again, a pretty sluggish 13.5 seconds. But MPG is good at around 48 and CO2 emissions remain really low for an all wheel drive model at around 132 grams per kilometer, placing this in the 31% company car tax band. So it's a great company car option. If you wanna explore the powertrains in a bit more detail to find the one that suits you perfectly, get in touch with our team via the link in the description below. You get four different driving modes with the all grip models. These are auto and this prioritizes fuel economy, sport and that's great for twisty roads as it optimizes cooling performance, snow and this is good for extra traction on slippery and unpaved surfaces and if you get the car stuck in some snow, mud or sand, stick it into the lock mode as that will send extra torque to the gripping wheels while braking those that are slipping. Ride quality is very good, it's firm and it's well dammed and that keeps things rather settled and calm inside the cabin here, whether you're driving through bumpy B roads like this, around town or getting up to speed on an A road or dual carriageway. Though I will say aggressive abrasions and sharp potholes do send a thump throughout the cabin, but the Vitara deals with this a lot nicer than most of its rivals. It's clear that ride quality has been optimized for that off-road drive capability though. So if you're after something that's a little bit more refined and comfortable behind the wheel, do look more towards the Skoda Kamiq where that was very much a priority. The Vitara remains one of the lightest SUVs in its class coming in at around 1,260 kilograms. So how does this impact handling? Well, the car keeps its shape really nicely when going around tight corners and bends and body lean is much less severe than it is with the much larger and new Suzuki S-Cross. If you want to find out more about the drive with that car, click the pop-up banner above to go and watch our new in-depth review. However, it doesn't feel as dynamic behind the wheel as rivals like the Ford Puma and that is down to this car's extremely light steering. And I normally praise this with new models. I love it with my Kia Picanto, but it's just too light here and it doesn't provide any kind of feedback or feel with the wheels. This could have been remedied by the sport mode with the all grip models, just firming up the steering slightly and making it more engaging. But as it is, the drive is just a bit boring as a result. On the bright side, it's a great city motor. It's easy to maneuver into and out of tight parking spaces, down narrow city streets and around precarious junctions and roundabouts. It's just a bit slow to change direction. So it's not as nippy as a dedicated city car like my gorgeous Kia Picanto. I'm impressed by how quiet the engine is, especially at speeds below 30 miles per hour. Where it seems like the electric motor is doing most of the work. However, under hard acceleration, when you're trying to get at speeds above 40 uh, to merge onto a dual carriageway, something like that, the engine sounds rather coarse as if you're straining it somehow. Road noise is okay. It isn't as well soundproofed as the new S-Cross, but the 17 inch alloy wheels do a great job at smoothing out the undulations. And wind noise is certainly noticeable at those faster speeds. And you will hear some bellowing coming from the uh, mirrors and the windscreen. And that's due to the Vitara just not being that well aerodynamically designed, especially when compared to the new S-Cross. The Vitara provides a lofty driving position, giving you a fantastic view of the road ahead over the bonnet. The side pillars are nice and slim and they don't obscure your view at roundabouts and junctions. I just would have liked a little bit of glass here so you can see uh, the corners of a roundabout. 
The view at the back is pretty decent and over the shoulder view is great uh, thanks to the slim rear pillars and glass panels where blind spots would normally be. This is all assisted by the rear view camera that comes as standard, though admittedly I'm not too impressed by this. I'm not finding the guidelines to be particularly helpful, definitely not as helpful as they are with the new S-Cross and uh, similarly sized small SUVs, but it's great that this feature comes as standard. The Vitara achieved the maximum five star safety rating from Euro NCAP and it was the first compact SUV to achieve such a score when it underwent more stringent tests in 2015. However, that rating has since expired, so it's hard to directly compare this car's safety to equivalent rivals. Saying that though, you get a whole host of standard safety features like the absolutely essential autonomous emergency braking, plus hill hold assist, adaptive cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, and blind spot monitoring. Suzuki's warranty is pretty standard. It covers you for three years or 60,000 miles, whichever comes first. It's not as impressive as the seven year, 100,000 mile warranty you get with a particular rival, the Kia Stonic, but you do get a 12 year anti-perforation warranty on top. We haven't spoken much about the interior, so let's dive into that a bit more closely now. The Vitara's cabin might put off some buyers who expect a luscious interior upholstered in the finest high quality materials, because that's certainly not what you get here. It's pretty basic and 90% of the time you'll be looking at these hard, durable plastics on the dash, center console and on the doors. The plastics themselves are quite light and we imagine this was a weight saving procedure to keep the Vitara lighter than the majority of its rivals. And to be fair, there is a fair bit of material variety, notably the chrome inlay that runs underneath the dashboard, looks all right. And then you have the infotainment system encased within this piano black cluster. The driver and front passenger get loads of space to enjoy in the front here. Headroom is also good, so I'm 5'8 and I'm nowhere near that roof lining. But if you are six foot or over, the tufts of your hair might just be touching the top, especially if you've gone with the top spec SZ5 trim level because you get the panoramic sunroof. That restricts headroom more so in the back than the front, but it's worth bearing in mind. The seats are a pretty bog standard affair. No lumbar support and no no electric adjustment, but you do get a good amount of adjustability to find a comfortable driving position for you. You can raise yourself up and down, forwards and backwards, and you can do the same for the steering wheel. It's just a shame that there's no lumbar support because having been behind the wheel of the Vitara for longer than an hour, I did start to get a sore back, so that would have been nice. Also these side bolsters, I wish they were a little bit more prominent to hold you in place better when going around tight turns. With the top spec SZ5 trim level, you get suede fabric for the seats, and the design is all right, and they're really easy to clean, any crumbs and bits and bobs you can just swipe off and hoover them up later. So if you're somebody who uses your car like a shed on wheels, this is going to be a benefit. The steering wheel is wrapped in some leather but it doesn't feel particularly premium. It's hard and it's not very grippy so on those hot summer days when you've got sweaty palms they'll be sliding down the wheel. Behind the wheel, in case between two analog dials, we have a tiny 4.2 inch HD display and that shows key information like torque data, engine output, fuel consumption and economy. It's nice to have all that essential information right where you want it. The infotainment cluster houses a seven inch touch display and with that you get DAB radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto but that is a wired connection not wireless. I'm not really impressed with the display. It's a bit laggy and unresponsive to use especially on the go and when you're trying to punch in an address in the, in the uh, 3D nav. This is the uh, navigation screen here so a fair bit of lag as I swipe around and I zoom in and out. The graphics aren't particularly sharp and I'm not a fan of the touch sensitive buttons on either side of the display. Would have preferred these to be physical controls as the volume's a bit fiddly, especially when you're driving along and trying to focus on the road ahead, as are the shortcuts for home and settings. Yeah, a bit disappointed. If you just use the infotainment to connect your phone up via Bluetooth to answer and reject calls, uh, play albums and podcasts, then this is functional and it's serviceable, but the Bluetooth isn't really that good. It takes around 20 seconds or so to connect up with your phone. And in the first 10 seconds or so of playback, it keeps cutting out the audio and that's really frustrating. 
I hope that with a subsequent generation update for the Vitara, we get the infotainment system that's found with the new S-Cross, as that was much more intuitive. To make up for the touch-sensitive button fiasco, we have physical controls for the air conditioning, always welcome to see, and they're really easy to use while on the go. Below that, we've got some cubby holes. There's an area for your smartphone. I have an iPhone 12, so it's one of the smaller options in iPhone's range. It just about fits in there. It's a bit of a squeeze, so if you've got a larger Galaxy S20 or a iPhone Pro Max, I doubt it's gonna fit in there. But you also get a 12 volt socket and a USB-A port, not USB-C unfortunately. And below that you get another little cubby, perfect for your keys. Behind the gear selector you get another tiny cubby and awkwardly sized cup holders which are placed a little bit too far back. They're awkward to reach when driving along and they're too small for my bulky bottle. No way are they going in there. But this fits nice and snug in the door bins which are cavernous. You get a center compartment, lift that up. There's nothing in there, no USB port or 12 volt socket. It, just a deep space for your snacks and other bits and bobs. So that means the only USB port is a USB-A at the front and that's pretty disappointing for a new car. The glove box is underwhelmingly sized. It's not as big as the one you'll find inside the Nissan Juke. But to make up for this, you do get a sunglasses compartment. Always great to see and it makes a nice clicky sound as you open and close it. The Vitara is firmly positioned in the family car segment, so what's the rear space like for passengers? Is it comfortable and is it spacious? Let's hop out and take a look. Okay guys, I'm actually more impressed with the back of the Vitara than I am with the back of the new S-Cross. It's obviously not as large and spacious, but it does more with what it has to work with. Legroom is good, I can't stretch out all the way, but I'm comfortable. My knees aren't too high up, and my legs are nicely supported by the soft, squidgy material used for the seats. Headroom, absolutely fine for me. I'm quite a bit of a way from that roof lining, but if you do have passengers in the back here who are six foot or over, perhaps don't get the panoramic sunroof because that does trim into the roof lining quite a bit. The doors are light and easy to open, great if you regularly travel with elderly passengers. They also open wide, so around 90 degrees, making it convenient to load those bulky kids' seats into the back. You can then strap them down to the Isofix anchor points on either rear seat and they're my favourite kind of configuration for these. There's no bulky bit of plastic on them or awkward flap you've got to faff around with. Just slide the seat in, it will lock and jobs are good in. The rear cabin isn't as spacious as the Skoda Kamiq which is still the class leading small SUV for interior comfort. If you have three passengers in the back here they will be touching shoulders and legroom will be compromised. I'm also disappointed by by the lack of any other bits and bobs in the back here. You don't get a pouch on the back of the seats for objects. The door bins are bottle shaped, but they're awkward to fit any other kind of item. There's no air conditioning cluster with USB ports or storage cubbies, and you can't fold down the middle bit here for a couple of cup holders. It's just, it's very basic. Middle seat test time. Let's slide on over. What is it like? Do you know what? It's not too bad. Uh, thanks to the plush seat upholstery, I'm getting a nice amount of support for my back. So I could sit here for a, an hour, perhaps even longer. Legroom is okay. Of course, I'm going to have to stretch out uh, to the other rear passenger space, but it's not too bad. It is worth noting that the, this seat is raised slightly higher than the others, so passengers over six foot tall will definitely be touching the roof lining. That's it for the interior. Let's talk about trim levels. So there's two on offer. They used to be free, but Suzuki dropped one a while back, presumably because it wasn't very good. So here are my three highlights for each of the trim levels. SZT trims start from around £23,700 and for that you get 17 inch alloy wheels with this nice chrome and piano black design. Front LED headlights, low and high beam. And lots of safety gadge, including blind spot monitoring integrated onto the mirrors. Top spec SZ5 trims start from £25,700 and the highlights include the panoramic sunroof, letting lots of light into the cabin at the expense of headroom and the suede fabric for the seats, plus front and rear parking sensors to assist the standard rear view camera. 
If you want to find out more about the trim levels and the different equipment on offer, get in touch with our team via the link in the description below. So guys, should you buy, lease or finance a Suzuki Vitara in 2022? Well, there's lots of reasons why you should consider this model over equivalent rivals. The entry level SZT variant represents excellent value for money over equivalent competition. And I'm very impressed with the great fuel efficiency and low CO2 emissions delivered by those hybrid powertrains, especially those configured with four wheel drive. I love the modes that you get with the all grip system. And that means the Vitara is one of the best small SUVs for driving on various terrain. I'm a fan of that bold exterior design. It doesn't look outdated yet. And it's easy to pick the Vitara out of a crowd of similarly sized SUVs. The lofty driving position is great and the space on off inside the cabin is generous. And while I'm not a fan of that overly light steering, this car is incredibly easy to maneuver around town as a result. The interior build quality leaves quite a lot to be desired though. It's no nonsense, but it's basic and it's not exactly premium. You're not gonna impress passengers as soon as they hop in there. And that infotainment system needs a bit of work. It's far too laggy and unresponsive for my tastes. Sadly, the Vitara isn't as engaging to drive as more dynamic equivalents like the Ford Puma. And there's no diesel engine option available, which is a shame for motorists who regularly cover long distances. And if you plan on having passengers in the back who are over six foot, their headroom is restricted if you opt for the panoramic sunroof. So that's something you'll have to weigh up whether it's worth it for you. Overall guys, I've had a great time with the Vitara and you should definitely consider it if you're after a small SUV. It does exactly what it says on the tin and while for some it might not be enough, for me that's quite refreshing from a vehicle from this class. If you want to find out more about the Vitara and you need a hand finding the perfect spec for you, get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903 538 835 or you can click the pop-out banner up there to book a date or time for a quick chat whenever works for you. The review is over now but before you go give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to join the OSV community and don't neglect the bell because when you click it you're going to be rewarded with something amazing, notifications on when our new videos go live. But that's it, thanks guys, see you again soon, take care, safe driving.